Good morning, St. Philip's. When the Apostle Paul wrote to his young protege in the faith, Timothy, he gave him this warning. Listen to this. He said, The Spirit clearly says that in latter times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. That's a pretty serious warning. Now, when Paul said that these things would happen in latter times, um, some have understood this to mean uh, referring to that moment just prior to the second return of Jesus Christ, that moment that we profess each and every week in the words of the Apostles' Creed when we say that, that Jesus will return to judge the quick and the dead. But this verse, my friends, can equally be understood to mean um, in succeeding times or in times to come. And certainly, as any student of history can tell you, this has been precisely the case. That, that is, these seasons of deception seem to come in waves. If we look back to the, to the latter part of the 19th century, we saw a, a wave of deception uh, come forth in the form of three predominant movements of Mormonism, Christian Science, and Jehovah's Witness. In the middle of the 20th century, we again saw another wave come with the movements of um, the Unification Church, known sometimes as the Moonies, um, Scientology, and the followers of Jim Jones. And, and all of these waves of deception have led people astray, and, and to some, to, to terrible consequences. And the reason that I'm bringing all of this up is because I'm beginning to wonder if we might perhaps be in the midst of one of these seasons, one of these waves of deception. And that's because whenever the world is in uh, experiencing upheaval, as we are experiencing today, people's anxiety levels begin to rise. And when people be uh, become anxious and afraid, um, in those moments, they become open to all sorts of, of ideas and philosophies and movements. Now, God can certainly seize on this opportunity and use it to bring people to faith, as I trust that he is doing um, at this very moment. And for that, we can say, thanks be to God. Hallelujah. But we also know that the father of lies, uh, the devil himself, will seize this opportunity, this, this openness of people, and, and he will seize on their anxiety, um, he will seize on their fear, and he will use it to lead them astray. And so this raises an important question, both for ourselves, but perhaps more importantly for our children and our grandchildren and our nieces and our nephews who are coming up in this world. How do we discern the difference? Uh, how do we know the difference, for example, between a Jim Jones and a Tim Keller? And the answer really is quite simple. Whenever you are evaluating any leader or movement, the standard for evaluation should be this. What do they do with Jesus? What does uh, the leader or the movement say about who Jesus is? Um, what does it say about his teachings? Uh, does the movement and the leader place itself under the authority of the teachings of Jesus Christ? Or do you begin to see the leader and the movement exalting itself over and above the person and the teaching and the work of Jesus? Deeper still, do the actions um, of that leader or that movement line up with the person and work of Jesus Christ? Does it have the fragrance of the Savior? We're living now in the midst of great turmoil. We're, we're surrounded by, um, I think, what could be described as a maelstrom of voices and movements and leaders. And while it's understandable um, that, that there is a call for action uh, to address the injustices in the world that are, are around us, um, injustices that are indeed offensive to God, friends, we need to be cautious and discerning about the company that we keep. Uh, we need to be wise as serpents, but also innocent as doves, as Jesus himself said. Because as Paul reminded his protege Timothy, there will be latter times, succeeding times, when a spirit of deception will begin to take hold and lead people astray. People like you and me, people like our children and our grandchildren, our nieces and our nephews. Now, these movements will generally have a grain of truth. There'll be a, a veneer of legitimacy. But underneath it, when you scratch below the surface, um, underneath it is falsehood. Now, my friends, it's clear that this world has a long way to go before it starts to reflect God's loving purposes. 
Um, but as we seek to be change makers, and indeed we are called to be change makers, um, and as we seek to encourage our children and our grandchildren to do the same, to stand up for what is right, we need to align ourselves with movements that are walking in the way of the cross, with movements and leaders who have the fragrance of the Savior. My friends, may God grant us the grace and courage indeed to stand up for what is right and to teach our children to do the same. And may He, by His Spirit, grant us holy discernment to recognize those movements and leaders that truly bear His name and that serve His purposes. My friends, may God bless you and we hope to see you on Sunday.